All right, here's a new problem here. It says, which points on the graph of y equals 4 minus x squared are closest to the point 0, 2? So this is a case where it's an optimization problem because we're talking about closest. That means a minimum distance, right? But there's not really like a primary equation and a secondary equation. So let's just begin by sketching an example of what we're looking at here. 4 minus x squared is a downward facing parabola that goes through or has a y-intercept of 4. And let's see here, I have x-intercepts at positive and negative 2. If we set that equal to 0, we get positive and negative 2. So here's what our function looks like. And our question is, what point on that blue curve right there is closest, or points, there could be multiple ones, probably multiple ones since it's a parabola, are closest to the point 0, 2. All right, so what we're looking at are distances between this point and points on the curve. So maybe it's this point out here, or maybe it's a point that's directly um, horizontal to this, or maybe it's the point that is directly vertical of this. Okay, I don't know which one it is, but I'm just pointing out some possibilities. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at here is our distance formula. Okay, our distance formula. Our distance formula, in case you've forgotten, is the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. Now, technically, it doesn't matter what order you do that in, whether you put the y's first, the x's first, whether it's y2 minus y1, whatever. It really doesn't matter just so you're consistent with it. So right now, it looks like we have four variables. Okay, but really we don't uh, because we do know one of these points. We know for sure that one of these points is 0, 2. So we can name that our first point if we want to. We can call that, actually let's call this the second point. Let's name it x2, y2 just so that we don't have to deal with uh, the um, one less negative that we have to deal with. Okay. All right, so let's start by substituting that into our equation. If we do that, if x2 is 0, then all we have is x1 squared. Technically, we don't even need the subscript anymore um, because we don't have multiple x's. But x1 minus 0 is just x1, so that's squared. Plus y1 minus 2 squared. So we still have two variables. We still have two variables. But let's think about the relationship between x1 and y1. That is the point on the curve. So we have a relationship there. We know that y is equal to 4 minus x squared. So we could substitute for our y here with that expression 4 minus x squared. That's the key to these optimization problems is that you've got to get it so that you only have one variable and they will always make it so that you can reduce it down to one variable. So I just dropped the subscripts because I really don't need them because I don't have multiple x values now. So we've got x squared plus I subbed for my y, I subbed 4 minus x squared but that was still minus 2. Now we have it in one variable. We should probably simplify as much as we can before we take the derivative, just so that taking the derivative isn't quite so difficult. So we've got x squared plus 4 minus 2 is 2. And since we have an x squared under that square root as well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, foil this out so that maybe I can combine some like terms. So when we FOIL 2 minus x squared, we get 4. The outside and the inside both give us minus 2x squared, so we have minus 4x squared. And negative x squared times negative x squared is positive x to the 4th. 
and then we can combine our x squares, and I'm just going to write this in standard form. So x to the 4 minus 3x squared plus 4. That's pretty much as simple as we can get uh, with this distance formula. Okay, so now we're finally at the point where we can take the derivative. Okay, up to now we were just substituting, simplifying, getting it so that the derivative was as easy as possible. So d prime is equal to, it's under a square root, so that means it's raised to the one half power, so we got to deal with that first. Bring down the one half power, we keep the inside the same, we subtract one, so that's the negative one half. Then we multiply by the derivative of what was on the inside. 4x cubed minus 6x. And now we are going to set this equal to 0. That means we set each piece equal to 0. So 0 is equal to, technically that the negative one-half power, that's in the denominator, so that could produce critical points, okay, where the denominator is equal to zero as well. So we set that piece equal to zero, and now it has, it has a positive one-half power just simply for the fact, well, you know what, let's just leave it as a negative one-half power. It doesn't matter. Leave it as a negative one. Okay. Um, so we set that piece equal to zero. We set the other piece equal to zero. And we're going to solve. Okay? Now we're going to do this without a calculator. We raise both sides here technically to the negative second power. It really doesn't matter because 0 to any power is the same thing. Now, x to the 4th minus 3x squared plus 4. We need to factor that. That would be x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 1. Okay? Nope not plus 1. Is that factorable? Uh, hang on. That doesn't work because negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4. That's not factorable. Oh, oh, yeah. But yeah, the one half is not going to equal zero, so it doesn't, yeah, that part doesn't matter. <clears throat> okay, um, hmm, let's see here. This is not factorable. I thought it was factorable, but it is not factorable. So, let's graph it. That's really our only choice here, is to graph it and just see if this crosses the x-axis. And it does not. That's why it was not factorable. So that never equals zero. So that piece doesn't do us any good. So our only critical number has got to come from this other piece over here. Uh, now this one is factorable. It has GCF. Take out a 2 and take out an X. So when we do that, we're left with 2X squared minus 3. So we've got 2X is equal to zero. And we have 2X squared is equal to 3. So we get x equals 0, and we get x squared is equal to 3 halves. When we take the square root, x is equal to plus or minus square root of 3 over the square root of 2. I was just trying to think of it. Yeah, let's just leave that as the square root of the entire square root 3 over 2. We just leave it that way because AP never rationalizes. Okay, so we have three potential critical points. We need to check these to see if they're minimums or maximums. Now, we really didn't have to worry about that uh, in the problems that we did yesterday because we only got one critical point, so that had to have been our min or our max, whichever one it was asking for. So let's see here, let's find out what the square root of 3 over 2 
is equal to so we know what to pick. Okay, uh, so that's nice. We can use 1 and negative 1 because it's a little bit bigger than 1. And then we can use negative 2 and positive 2 to plug into our derivative to check the size. So if we plug negative 2 into our derivative, one half is always positive. That first piece, the x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 4, that's to the one half power, so it's a square root. So that's going to be a positive. And then when we plug negative 2 cubed, gives us a negative 8 times 4 is negative 32 plus 12, that's a negative, so we are negative to the left of the negative square root of 3 over 2. When we plug in negative 1, we're going to do uh, positive times positive times that last piece. Negative 4 plus 6 is a positive, so we are positive here. When we plug in 1, we've got a positive times positive. Those first two pieces are always positive. 4 minus 6 is a negative, and then um, 2 is going to be a positive times a positive times, uh, when we plug positive 2 in that last piece, it's still a positive, so that is positive. So, that means we've got minimums at these uh, square root of 3 over 2's, the positive and the negative, we have a maximum at 0. Maximum at 0. So, uh, our minimum distance, wait, that is what we're looking for, right? Yeah, closest to point zero two. So, our minimums are at, uh, let's see here, we've got to find the y values. So, y is equal to 4 minus x squared. So, 4 minus, well, when you square square root, you get what's under the square root. So, uh, minus 3 halves, 4 is 8 halves, so that's what, 5 halves. So, at plus or minus square root of 3, 5 halves are the closest points on this curve to the point 2, 0. So, they're just a little bit above, or excuse me, 0, 2. Because uh, their y value is 5 halves, 2.5, so they're just a little bit above the point uh, there and off to the right. So those are the closest points.